Now that you've started to create an entry for the concept database, it's time to examine some of the other fields that are necessary in order to complete your submission. We've already looked at the title and the year of your concept. We've already looked at the author or authors that are responsible for coming up with your conception. We've already entered a citation or citations for works where we can see these conceptions in action. And we've already talked about where you enter the actual conception text, that is where you distill down their conception um, and you explain to us what it is. But all conceptions are contextual. This is to say that the reason they've conceptualized something in a certain way is because they've done it in a certain time and for a specific reason. So the context tab allows us to explain this context to people who come in and read. So the context system works almost the same as the conception. It's still a text box where you can enter in information. The reason that we provide context is because one author might conceptualize organizational communication one way, and then at another time, another author might conceptualize organizational communication in a different way. The context of those conceptions is very important. So what we allow for you to do here is to explain the context of your given conception. So in this case, the context of this conception, organizational communication, is that the three authors came together to write a textbook for the university classroom. And in general, they're trying to help students be successful getting a job and succeeding in the workplace. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a brief explanation of the context of this particular conception. Just like with all of the other fields in our concept database, you can always come back and edit this later. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with a relatively brief explanation of the context. And you can read here that I wrote, as they are looking from an employment perspective and conduct research of organizations in practice, the authors primarily limit their work to a specific context, generally including businesses and, quote, most social groups, service groups, and religious groups, as well as other work-oriented organizations. Their text is written with the aim of helping students become better employees and managers within organizations. It's important to understand this context because it will help you to better understand their conception of organizational communication and how it might be different from other authors and other times and other places. So now that we've gone ahead and typed in our context of use, we'll just hit save. And you can see the green box, which is always good, that says your context of use has been updated. Thank you for contributing. So the difference between the conception and the context is that the conception is the specific way that your author or authors have conceived of the concept organizational communication. And the context is generally the time, the place, and the reason that they needed to conceptualize organizational communication. And so by explaining the context and their conception, it becomes very useful to understanding why they're talking about organizational communication and how they're talking about it. And in this way, the concept database doesn't just provide one single definition for organizational communication, but instead helps us to understand the very different approaches that different scholars have taken over the course of history. In the next video, We'll go through and show you how to do some of the other fields, such as the Fields tab, the Embedded Concepts, Multimedia, and finally how to publish your conception once you're done editing it. Thanks for contributing.